we're going to find the arc length of f of x equals to natural log of x for x between 1 and uh, square root of 3. So let's first of all see what it is we're trying to do. The graph of the natural log of x function looks like this. When x equals 1, natural log of 1 is 0. So we start at this point, And then when x equals to square root of 3, the y-coordinate is natural log of square root of 3, which is natural log of 3 to the 1 half. And that's equal to 1 half times the natural log of 3. So this is 1 half ln of 3. And we want to find the length of the curve between these two points. The formula, if we have a y equals f of x defined for uh, x between a and b, the length of the curve is the integral from a to b of the square root of 1 plus f prime of x squared. Now this formula will be derived in a subsequent video, so you should check for that. It will be a few videos after this one. For our case, we're going to take the derivative of the function that's equal to 1 over x, and then integrate. The length is going to be integral from 1 to square root of 3 of square root of 1 plus 1 over x squared, so that's 1 divided by x squared. So all we have to do is evaluate this integral. This is integral from 1 to square root of 3 of square root of x squared plus 1 divided by x squared. And we can further simplify this as equal to the integral from 1 to square root of 3 of square root of 1 plus x squared divided by x dx. So first thing we're going to do is to drop the limits of integration 1 and square root of 3 and find antiderivative of square root of 1 plus x squared divided by x. And we'll do that by trigonometric substitution. The substitution is x equals to tangent of theta. So then dx is equal to secant squared theta d theta and 1 plus x squared is equal to 1 plus tangent squared theta, which is equal to secant squared of theta. So let's return to the integral and make the substitution. We have square root of 1 plus x squared. 1 plus x squared is now secant squared of theta divided by x. That's tangent theta and then dx, that's secant squared of theta d theta. So we have to evaluate the integral. Square root of secant squared is secant because we are in the interval where it's positive. So this is secant cubed theta divided by tangent theta. How do we evaluate this integral? Well, there may be several ways to do it. Probably the easiest way to do it is to do the following. We'll take the numerator and write it as secant theta times secant squared theta divided by tangent theta. And then using the trig identity, we're going to write secant squared as 1 plus tangent squared theta divided by tangent theta d theta. And this is equal to the integral of secant times 1, that's secant theta, plus secant theta tangent squared theta over tangent of theta. And then we can write this as two integrals. The first integral is secant theta over tangent theta. And the second integral is secant theta tangent squared theta divided by tangent theta. 
well the first integral we can we're going to break it down into sines and cosines so it, secant is 1 divided by cosine theta divided by tangent which is sine theta over cosine theta d theta plus the integral one of the tangents cancel in the second integral so it is secant theta times tangent theta d theta now in the first integral cosines cancel and we have integral of 1 over uh, sine so 1 divided by sine of theta d theta plus the integral of secant theta tangent theta is secant theta so we already know the second integral what about the first well the first integral 1 over sine that's the integral of cosecant that's the integral of cosecant theta plus secant theta. The integral of cosecant is something you may have already derived in an earlier video. You can see the integral of secant and the integral of cosecant is done the same way. It is the natural log of absolute value of cosecant of theta minus cotangent of theta. And then of course we had plus secant theta. Now let's return to what we did. Recall that the length curve, length of the curve was the integral from 1 to square root of 3 of square root of x squared plus 1 divided by x. So after making those substitutions, the after making the substitution of x equal to tangent theta, we came up with this integral. So now we have to express this integral in terms of x as a function of x and not as a function of theta. So tangent theta equals x. We draw this triangle and call this angle theta. Tangent is opposite over adjacent, so it's x divided by 1. That, that means the hypotenuse has to be square root of x squared plus 1. And now we can express this integral as a function of x and evaluate it from 1 to square root of 3. So this is natural log of absolute value. Cosecant is 1 divided by sine. Sine is opposite over the hypotenuse. So cosecant is hypotenuse square root of x squared plus 1 divided by the opposite which is x minus cotangent. Cotangent is 1 over tangent. Tangent is uh, opposite over adjacent, so cotangent is adjacent over the opposite, that's 1 over x. And then plus secant, secant is hypotenuse divided by the adjacent, so that's square root of x squared plus 1. And we want to evaluate this from 1 to the square root of 3. Let's plug in square root of 3 first into the natural log we have square root of 3 squared is 3 plus 1 that's 4 square root of 4 is 2 so we have 2 divided by the square root of 3 and then minus 1 divided by the square root of 3 plugging in the square root of 3 into the square root of x squared plus 1 we get square root of 4 which is 2 and now let's plug in 1 minus, plugging in 1 into the natural log, we have the natural log of square root of 2 over 1, so that's square root of 2 minus 1, and then plus square root of 2. So our final answer is going to look like this. From the first part we have 2 plus natural log of 1 over the square root of 3 minus the natural log of square root of 2 minus 1 minus the square root of 2. The only thing we can simplify is uh, the natural log, let's write this over here, natural log of 1 over square root of 3 is equal to natural log of 1 minus the natural log of square root of 3 which is 3 to the 1 half natural log of 1 is 0 so this is minus 1 half times the natural log of 3 so the final answer is 2 
minus one half times natural log of three minus natural log of square root of two minus one minus the square root of two. You can put that in the calculator and to get the final numerical